Alright, welcome to part 10 in our PowerPoint 2013 video series, getting you ready for that certification exam number 77-422. This is going to be part 10. In part 10, we're going to learn how to insert and format tables into our slideshows. Okay, tables are great if you want to display data. Uh, we can use tables to format data too, maybe not layout data. I mean, not so much in PowerPoint as you would maybe if you're designing a website. They really don't even do that in designing websites anymore. But if I want to display data in my PowerPoint presentation, I can do so. And this is how I'm going to do it. Um, I'm on slide two of the slideshow I've been using uh, recently. I'm going to go to insert and table. And I got a couple different choices. I can select how many columns and rows and stuff of that nature I want from this interface. I can insert a table which means I can put in the number of columns and rows I need or I can draw a table. Typically I don't like to draw a table it's kinda of clunky um, you know something like that and I think it puts in the columns and rows for you. I don't I rarely ever use that so that's why I I, I just don't like it. I'm an engineer um, of sorts. So I just want to insert a table. I want to put in how many rows, how many columns, or I want to select it from the boxes here. Let's say I want to put in a... There we go. That ought to do it right there. And it comes formatted as the theme uh, colors in my PowerPoint presentation. If I want to, maybe I want to add a column or a row. Maybe I have this full of data now, right? And I want to add a column or add a row or something like that. And I really don't want to start over from scratch, right? So what I want to do is I can right click in this. I can say format shape. I can select the table. See, that'll do it for me. Here we go. I'm select the table here. And I got to get just the right spot here, format shape. Nope, I'm seeing if this is like Word or something like that, and it's really not. So what we're going to do here is, if you'll notice, when the table itself is selected, I have two tabs in my Affluent ribbon. I have the Design tab, and I have the Layout tab. If I click on the Layout tab, there we go, I can insert columns to the right or left. I can insert rows above or below the current row. So, insert right. There we go. I can insert as many columns as I want. I can insert rows below. So if I do have this full here, let me make a smaller table so you guys can see what this is doing. Let me insert a table. All you have to do is press the delete key when the table's selected too. So you know, uh, here we go. We'll just put header one, header two, which that's what the dark row is here. It's typically a header row. It's typically what you use to describe the data. Um, 100 and 200. All right. And then I'm going to go to the layout tab. And I'm going to insert a row below this one. And maybe I want a row above the row my data is on to. There we go. Maybe I want another column. I'm going to insert a column to the right. Uh, maybe I want a column between these two columns. Well, let's insert a column to the left. Wherever your cursor is, that's considered the active part of your table. And that's what orientates it from left to right. pretty neat stuff. If I want to apply a different style to my table, maybe I think the one that comes with the uh, my PowerPoint design template thing kind of stinks, um, I can add or I can change rather the style. Eh, that kind of blends in too much. It looks too minty green for me to uh, brown. Like uh, There we go. That might work well depending on, you know, what's happening. So again, I can change the style of my table. 
Maybe I want something like that where it, the data rows alternate in color. So you, so you can see things a little differently. There's that mint green again. I didn't mean to click on that. Um, they give you quite a few. You can change your column width individually if you want to. Just like you can in Excel if you're familiar with that. Alright, if you double click you can automatically size your column to the widest entry plus a little bit of padding there. Alright, so pretty neat stuff you can do. Borders, here we go. What borders do we want? What if I select all borders? There we go. That turns on borders. They're kind of, well, they are black. Uh, there is no kind of black about it. Uh, if I right click on my table here and go to Format Shape, because PowerPoint sees it as a shape. Lines, here we go. No lines, solid lines. Size and properties. Alright, so I can do a whole bunch of neat stuff here. Position, I can change the position of it if I want to put the uh, hard values in. Size of it, I can change that. I can always move it around too if I want to. Right? What if I decide I don't need this column here anymore? Right? I can click a cell in that table, go to my layout, and delete. I don't want to delete the whole table though, do I? No, I just want to delete the column. There we go. And if I decide I don't need this one, what happens if I just click delete? Oh, it drops down for me. Sometimes it'll just do the default action, which looks like just delete the whole dang table, and I definitely didn't want to do that. Uh, delete rows. There we go. And I will delete that row as well. There we go. Neat stuff. I can change the alignment of my text inside my table. I can center it if I want to. I can put margins in my cells if I want to. For instance, if I want a little bit of a margin there, that might not be enough to perceive. There we go. That is, though. And then I can expand this out to where all the data is contained in one cell without having to wrap the text around it. Pretty cool stuff. I can split cells up. Let's decide. Let's say I want this one to split. I can split cells in a number of columns, number of rows, and boom, it's split up into two columns now. So that's pretty cool. You can split stuff up like that. What if I want to split this up, this one up here? And this is the neat thing about just doing this kind of, you know, without any live data is you can play with this as much as you want. There we go. Now I got two columns, two rows in there, so I kind of split it up more of a graph paper feel to it. Alright, let's say that I have a table in uh, in Excel. Alright, and I have an Excel sheet made up right now for this exercise. Right, I have the month uh, sales and expenses and the profit we made. Alright, now you can, truthfully, you can select the information here. And there's nothing wrong with doing it like this. Copy it. Paste it in there. You can use destination styles. Keep source formatting. If I want to keep it in the source and the formatting that it was in in Excel. I can embed it. Embedding is really cool. I'll show you that in a second. Picture or keep text only. Ugh, that's really not an option. Uh, picture. Do I want to embed it just as a picture? There we go. What if I paste it again? I'm going to paste it. I'm going to embed it this time is what I'm going to do. There we go. So I have two separate tables that have the same data in them, right? It's just one was pasted as a picture. The other was actually embedded into my slideshow. Let's say I want to change this. Let's say I want to change the expenses in March to 
$950. Oh, yep, somebody got zero happy and did that, right? Well, with the picture, I really can't do a whole lot with it. Okay, now I embedded this one. Worksheet object, there we go. We'll see what happens when I edit it. So I can actually get in there and edit values and things like that. And when I update, yeah, which I don't want to do that. That's just too messy. All right, I'm waiting for it to give me my ribbon back and stuff like that. My ribbon, my ribbon. Come on, there we go. Now I'm going to save this. And I'm going to close out of it. And when I open up PowerPoint again, go to this one here, and it's opening up. And I'm going to show you the difference. I'm going to show you a way to fix this too, because it's not going to work the way you think it's going to work. Yeah, I don't want to activate Office right now. Thank you very much. Yeah. When I save that, here we go. What happens if I press F5? Nope, nothing. That just shows me my slideshow. I definitely don't want to do that. What I can do is, instead of copying, pasting, embedding, and all this other stuff, I'm going to go to the Insert tab, okay, and I'm going to select Object, and then what it does is it gives you this big long list of objects. There's really no way to expand the window. I don't know why they do this, but I'm going to say Microsoft Excel Worksheet because that's what I'm working on, and it should ask me for a location of it. what it should do. Oh, that's right, because I didn't do that. Okay. Let me go to another slide real quick and do this. There we go. There's slide three right there. Okay, I'll keep it on slide three. Waiting for it to come back to life here. There we go. Object. Um, Here we go. Excel worksheet create from file that's what I forgot to click last time my mistake you see how easy things can happen in fog of war uh, I'm gonna click sales because that's the name of the Excel workbook I have and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to link it when I link it it inserts a picture of the file contents in your presentation the picture will be a shortcut uh, to the file so that changes to the file will be reflected in your presentation and it didn't get that one out of there for me. Let me dump that. Here we go. Is that the one I just brought in? Yep, that's the one I just brought in. I don't know why it brought that extra column with it. Or table with it. I wonder if we can get that out of there. Or is that just gonna make the that just makes the whole thing smaller? Okay, well, this will demonstrate our enough to say the changes made in here. Let's say it was actually $1,200. What was that one there for a profit of $6,800? And you see it changes. The changes, because it's an object, the changes are reflected immediately. They're not reflected in this where I would have to redo this one. I would have to open up Excel, copy, paste, and everything like that all over again and do it. So that's my big issue with importing data from external sources is what if that data changes after you make your PowerPoint presentation, right? Well, if you do an object, you don't have to worry about that uh, so much. Uh, unless you're happy with data that may change, which we all know, you know, data is dynamic, and uh, sometimes it just does. 
So if you if you're presenting your presentation at the time I made this presentation, the data was this. Maybe you preface it with that. I don't know. All right. Hope you had fun. Hope you learned a lot about tables in PowerPoint 2013. Like, subscribe, comment. Let me know how I'm doing. I'll see you in the next video.